Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another video for Eve Echoes. Once again, I'm outside here at Masuna Island Fishing Resort. It's a beautiful place, so when I'm here and making content, I kind of want to show it off as much as possible. I do apologize for any wind that we get. It is a very windy today and this was genuinely the most enclosed wind-free area I could get. Got a beautiful baobab tree behind me here, um, the river and some wildlife off to this side as well. Hopefully the donkeys won't interfere with today's video. Anyway, today's video is going to be about destroyers because I have a very controversial opinion that destroyers are actually absolutely fine, with a couple of minor exceptions that we will touch on later. But for the most part, I honestly think destroyers are in a good place. It is everything else that is the problem. That's a statement that's gonna take some qualifying. If you do enjoy today's video, please, as usual, slap that like button. Consider coming and supporting me on Patreon. It really means the world to me and helps keep this channel going so, so much. So thank you everyone to, uh, to everyone who does already pledge. And if you do want to pledge, head to patreon.com forward slash Captain Benzie. Thank you. First of all, what actually are destroyers? What is the design intent of destroyers? Now, once upon a time, Melos actually shared with me a design document that listed what every ship in the game was designed to do. And I don't mean literally every individual ship, I mean every category. Destroyers are in a bit of a unique position in regards to EVE in that on one hand, they are bigger than frigates and slower than frigates, which makes them less survivable there. But at the same token, they don't have the power grid or the tank of a cruiser, so they're less survivable than those. They are supposed to be cruiser level DPS, but with frigate level application. They are supposed to be ships that just absolutely annihilate enemy frigates. Now, in EVE Echoes, people often say that destroyers are too slow, they're not tanky enough, they're not meant to be faster, they're not meant to be tanky, that is the destroyer niche. The other hand is that they are supposed to be that cruiser level DPS, cruiser level damage, but with frigate application. And this is where the first problem with destroyers comes in. Now that statement again, I think that destroyers are fine, it's everything else that's the problem. That's pretty controversial in terms of games design because if you've got one thing surrounded by 30 and there's a problem with the one thing, surely you just wanna change the one thing rather than change the 30, right? It's easier. Easy doesn't mean good, right? Basically, in EVE Echoes, if you undock something like a Stabber, it doesn't really have much difficulty at all hitting the smallest frigates out there. Yeah, okay, you can argue that what about the Succubus or Tech 10 um, Interceptors and things like that, but those are ships that are purposefully designed to be hard to hit. I'm talking about your regular everyday frigate. If you go into PvE, for example, you're not going to struggle to hit anything if you're using a stabber or an omen or a caracal that's been properly fit. So what's the point in having destroyers? If cruisers don't struggle to hit small, faster moving targets, if I can fly an assault frigate and an omen can hit me, not even an omen navy issue, just an omen. If an omen can comfortably hit me while I'm flying an assault frigate, what is the purpose of a destroyer? Why would you fly, for example, a coercer instead of an omen? The omen and the coercer have the same DPS, Technically, the Omen has better DPS. The application is better on the Coercer, right? But the application doesn't matter because the application of the medium ships is already good enough. I mean, I'm flying a Harbinger and I can quite comfortably hit anything that's not an Interceptor or a Dromiel or a Succubus. That means that it's doing too much. Now I fly cruisers. I fly cruisers a lot. They have basically become the one thing I'm flying even more than frigates these days. Exploration, obviously, I'm out in my Probe Explorer, but other than that, I'm flying things like the Gila, the Stratios. I like flying cruisers, my Caracal 2, my Bellicose, the Arbitrator, these kind of things. I enjoy flying these ships. I'm not saying this out of, like, just old Benzie like small ships. I don't even do PvP. Cruisers are now my mainstay in the game. Those cruisers are doing too much. When I move on to Silent Rose and I'm flying my Harbinger or my Hurricane, and again, they have no trouble hitting the smallest, fastest ships out there. You have to ask yourself, what is the purpose of a destroyer? It's not that destroyers are bad. It's that why would you fly a destroyer that has weaknesses versus a cruiser that doesn't? If I put the cruiser and a destroyer side by side and assume they have the same DPS, they don't, but assume they had the exact same DPS. Assume I was doing a thousand DPS with a Talwar, a Talwar 2 Assault and a, a thousand DPS with a Caracal 2 using medium missiles. 
this has got better application. The Talwar 2 has better application than the Caracal, but that application doesn't actually matter, so we can kind of ignore that. Then we come down again and we look at tank, and the Caracal is a lot tankier than that Talwar 2 Assault. Surely you're going to go for the one that is better, and in that case, yeah, you're going to go for a cruiser rather than the destroyer. That's the problem with destroyers, that cruisers are eating too much into their niche. That requires you to nerf the medium weapons. I genuinely think that medium weapons track and apply a little too well. They shouldn't be tracking and applying that well because that's what's stopping you needing destroyers. The fix here, nerf medium weapon tracking, really nerf it. Make it so that it is hard to hit a standard assault frigate in PvE unless it's webbed. That's the point that they should be at. Medium weapons that don't have tracking bonuses should struggle to hit an assault frigate without webbing. Once we have webbing applied, maybe a tracking computer fitted, maybe even things like tracking rigs added to the game, then it should be comfortable to hit an assault frigate, but still struggling to hit a interceptor or a succubus or a daredevil or a dromiel. That's your step one. Your step two is then to look at down your uh, your battle cruisers and make sure the battle cruisers don't have tracking bonuses. Battle cruisers should have range and DPS bonuses. Battle cruisers to cruisers. Cruisers should be able to punch down a little bit. Battle cruisers should not be able to punch down two tonnages. Battle cruisers should be struggling to hit destroyers, let alone frigates. After you've nerfed all of the tracking of medium weapons and got it so that only cruisers can hit assault frigates and they are going to need some serious specialization if they want to be able to take on interceptors suddenly destroyers have a purpose again which is that they're the ones with the tracking to actually hit these things now the next problem you have is that destroyers need to have a lot faster lock times destroyers should be able to lock onto a frigate in record speed a frigate drops on grid a destroyer should be able to lock it disrupt it and stop it flying away destroyers essentially you don't want them to be fast, you don't want them to be chasing frigates, but you want a frigate to rue the day that it landed on grid with a destroyer. Imagine you've got your big battleship, which again has probably had its tracking nerfed so that it can't hit frigates, right? Basically, you've got a battleship, swarm of interceptors come in to try and tackle that battleship and hold it in place. Battleship is helpless. Now, add a single destroyer to that grid. That destroyer should be able to start just basically going you, 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 and taking those frigates off the grid. And I think that would honestly be what destroyers need for PvP. But what about PvE? Well, again, people are going to do their usual shout at me and be like, oh, Benzi, who cares about destroyers and PvE? Anyone who wants to fly destroyers, that's who. Why, why is it that a battleship pilot can comfortably do anything in the game they want? PvP, yeah, you've got battleship exclusive PV uh, PvP with Ego Traverse, with most call to arms. They want battleships there. Plenty of PvP opportunities for a battleship pilot. You've got anomalies, encounters, nihilist dead space, inquisitors, scouts and anomalies, dormant realms as well. So there's plenty of PvE opportunities for a battleship pilot. For a destroyer pilot, you've got PvP, and even then it's limited. You're basically an interdictor. Which brings me back to Dormant Realms. Dormant Realms, the thing I can't shut up about recently, apparently. Why don't they make a Dormant Realm that is exclusive to frigates and destroyers, small ships only, every difficulty level of the Dormant Realm is designed around a group of four players at tech level minus three. Difficulty 1 Dormant Realm is designed around four pilots in tech level 4 frigates and destroyers. That means they're going to be flying things like Thrasher 2s, Coercer 2s, probably some of the frigate options around there as well, maybe the odd Breacher, things like that. Fairly straightforward for them to do. This is entry level content for new players starting the game as well. They're tech 4 players, they're, it's something new and exciting for them to do just as they've started the game. At tech level 5, they're going to be flying things like, say, the Thrasher Fleet Issue, Thrasher Guardian. We're going to be looking at things like the Burst. The logistics frigates suddenly become available at that tech level as well. Level 2 Dormant Realm is now geared around tech 5 pilots. 
and they're going to be using things like guardians, fleet issues, logistics, so you can suddenly make it that little bit tougher. And yeah, you probably do need to do a little bit of balancing on those ships to make them a bit more worthwhile. At tech level 6, you're now anticipating doing difficulty 3 dormant realms, which is going to add in things like the Griffin, the Crucifier, E-War ships that suddenly have their use as well in bringing a Crucifier along so that any turrets you're up against have got tracking disruption on them. This then means that by the time you hit difficulty level level 7, you're expecting your entire group to be running with faction frigates, interceptors, and tech 2 assaults. The Talwar 2 assault, the Dragoon 2 assault, this kind of thing. That suddenly gives you some content to do as a frigate or destroyer PvE pilot. It's something challenging. Difficulty 8 is designed around a load of pilots who are dedicated into their frigates and destroyers at tech level 10. They've probably got some basic implants that they're working with, and at this point you also need to add assault frigates and more logistics frigates, either Tech 9 or Tech 10 logistics frigates, a Burst 3, a Bantam 3, this kind of thing, Navitas 3, get those into the game now at Tech Level 9, Tech Level 10. As a frigate, destroyer or cruiser pilot, there's no way to get yourself an implant right now and that really sucks because that means Dormant Realms are off bounds and implants are off bounds. Got two entire sections of the game that you just can't touch. Having the Dormant Realms available to lower tier players would give them something to do. Having it available to Frigate and Destroyer players would give them something to do as well, which I think could be so much fun. And by the time you hit the difficulty 10 Dormant Realms that are exclusive to Frigates and Destroyers, you're going to need everyone to have massively upgraded implants to be flying a very specific group of uh, Destroyers and that to get the absolute utmost out of their group. And I just think that would be so much fun. But anyway, that's enough of me rambling onwards, talking to a camera, choking on my own saliva and getting blown away by the wind here. Hopefully you guys have really enjoyed this one. It's a bit different to what I would normally put out content wise, but hopefully it's given you some food for thought. I'm sure that there are some of you who are going to agree with me and some of you are going to disagree with me and I'd love to have a chat with you in the comment section down below or indeed on the Catskull Discord. Otherwise folks, thank you for watching this one right the way through to the end. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.